Yeah. Okay, Gwen, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, we're recording. Okay. Uh, no worries. So t tell me, tell me about this mind. I've, I've been a, uh, interested in mind control my whole life. And Why? Tell me what, tell me what, 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 what started your interest? What, well, you, let me you tell you. I write books, but I've been interested in it since I was a child. But my book, uh, my third book that got me on the Basis Project and has gotten me a lot of international interviews, it's called My Family Created the National Security State, and in, the, in parentheses, no need to thank me. <laughs> wow, I want to read that book immediately. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, my father's uncle, my great uncle, uh, controlled every dime of the United States defense budget for over 40 years. Oh, my God. That's Army, oh Navy, God. Air Force, and Marines. And he also created a few agencies that you've probably never heard of. For instance, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, <laughs> and NASA. <laughs> so it's pretty oh, that is little old. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and and, believe, and I, so I've been doing this for about two or three years, and no one's ever even tried to refute these claims because it's not a secret. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So when did you discover, like, you know? Well, when we were children, we went and had our picture taken with Uncle George, and uh, they separated us from our parents. And they took us in his office, and it was just me and my brother, and my uncle George, and a photographer. And the photographer was taking some lights, and it was a very bright flash. And I have another experience with some pictures being taken in Mexico with a bright flash. But uh, ever since I was six years old, I got—I I guess you'd call them—I'm not going to say ideas. I'm going to say conviction, a conviction in my head, very strong conviction that my life would unfold into four phases, it's beginning when I was an adult, and phase one would be I would be going to prison, phase uh, two would be I would be uh, a member of a bike, a biker gang, uh, phase three was that I was going to become a rock star, and then phase four was that I was ultimately uh, being groomed to be a world leader. Oh my and strangely enough, this thing has gone j almost exactly according to plan. I was never in a biker gang, but uh, while I was in prison, I was in a, in a, in a notorious uh, prison gang that's known all over the world. And I don't, I don't name it because, uh, just because of, for reasons. And then, of course, and I was never a rock star, but uh, my, my star is rising on YouTube now pretty rapidly, and so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, these were just, I was six years old at the time, and these were just the ways I had to comprehend whatever this information was. And so it's Amazing. Been, yeah. Wow. Wow. And if you don't mind, how, how old are you now? Okay, well that's a, that's a good. That's, are you in your forties or? Well, uh, a lot of I'm people. I'm just gauging your generation. I'm not getting personal. No, that's fine. I don't mind. I don't mind telling you at all. And uh, thankfully, a lot of people think I uh, usually guess that I'm younger than I am, but I'm actually 52 years old. Okay. Okay. So you're sort of closer to my generation because I'm like 56 now. Yes. So that was like coming to age like in the 80s. Absolutely, a, all the 80s rock bands. It was a and very stuff like that. exciting time, right? Yeah, Kiss. It was an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. Kiss. Uh, you know, Motley Crue, The Who, all that stuff. Well, that's funny. I was sort of like into um, <laughs> uh, sort of the punk scene, Susie Sue. Um, um, you know, P Patty Smith. Like, actually, you know, it's like I didn't realize at the time that the punk scene was sort of run by, like, you know, that all my mates were Alistair Crowleyists, right? Well, they were yes. All sort of, you know, children from the Church of Salima. They were all, you know, um, I, I mean, you know, it's like you grow up into this, and you know, it's only the last ten years for me that I've been sort of researching. I mean, YouTube is just phenomenal, like. 
well, you know, yes. the amount of people have given me their information, their little piece. You know, we're all limited hangout, but when we share our limited hangouts, that's when we make out a quilt, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and let me tell you, uh, my audience knows uh, that I am a member of the secret society, and it's called the OTO. And oh no! So you, you bastards targeted me! You targeted me! What do you, you mean? I'm there, man! What, what you, <laughs> no, uh, I, I actually haven't been to the lodge in over two years now, about two and a half years. But I will tell you, I was, uh, and this, and and. This, this was not, okay, anyway, I was lured to Denver, Colorado about a year ago, and this has nothing to do with the order, but the people that lured me there were in the order, and uh, they tried to pull a ritual on me, and uh, it didn't work. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. It's, wow. it's fascinating. Oh, my God. You know, oh, God, I could, I could tell, like, you know, I'm, I've sort of been like, um, Three, you know, three degrees or two degrees or, you know, even one you look at that, various too? points separation from the OTO. The OTO, because the OTO has a lot of influence in the music industry and the film industry and the art industry, 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 you know, in, in, in general. So, um, you know, I, I was sort of inducted, like officially inducted um, when I was 17 via an MTV clip. Uh, from a band called uh, Flash in the Pan, um, and actually they were quite, uh, who were born out of this more fa famous Australian band uh, called Va um, uh, Vander and Young, you know, they, they were a songwriting team, really, and they were sorcerers, and they were sort of part of this, and uh, a filmmaker, he went on to make The Crow, uh, Dark City, iRobot, um, you know, a number of films. He, um, uh, his name is Alex Proyas, and he gave me the lead role in this flash in the pan clip called Midnight Man. And if you look at that clip, I mean, it's just so full of the symbolism. Like, I, I realise now I was targeted from them, right, from that point. And it was a form of predictive programming. And, you know, this is on MTV. This is a big deal. This is a big clip. He's an up-and-coming filmmaker, you know, like living in Australia Street <laughs> in Newtown with my, um, you know, boyfriend at the time. And, you know, there was a lot happening. There was a lot of music and film and it was, you know, it was that whole 80s do-it-yourself vibe where, you know, you can sort of defy, you know, where you came from or whatever and you can create your own, you know, you know, with your talents, if you're, you know, if you're putting the work, you can sort of create your own scene. So it was very much that vibe around that time. But when I look back on that film clip, uh, if you look up Google, Flash in the Pan, Midnight Man, um, Alex Proyas, that's me. And, you know, at the time, he directed it. He directed that film. So it was a type of initiation. Because the amount of times my... Because you've got the big white hand and... I mean, if you look at it and know anything, Think about it, which I'm sure you do. <laughs> the cartel symbolism, the satanic symbolism, it's all over this clip. And since then, you know, there's been this, um, uh, it was a predictive programming because they keep coming in to break in my door. And, and you know, wherever I am, you know, this big white hand <laughs> comes in and breaks in my door. And then it broke in my parents' door and led them off into a nursing home and stole their money. So, so for me, um, um, you know, I, I wasn't, Uh, Gwen, Gwen, you're so, uh, that's the second time your voice has kind of uh, gone down in volume. I don't know if you're speaking away from the phone, but uh, other than that, we, we can hear you just fine. Okay, good. Did you good. turn your head from the phone or something? Well, actually, maybe I'm too close and it's cutting out. I'll stand back because I'm you know, in the 1850s who sort of got buried after that. And a sister who I'm sort of in this narrative war with now, right? Um, you know, she's the one who dug up Octavia Hamilton, right? She's the academic. So, and and the thing was, I was a sort of middle child in my family. I grew up with these beautiful sisters, you know, and I had my dad's big Scottish potato head. So I had a gift, like, in a way it was sort of good because no one was jealous of me and I didn't have to deal with that, right? And, and I was sort of... I, 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 I was given, and I wasn't that smart. I had a bit of ADD, really. I was just a, a, a natural creative, and but I did have an occultic gift from from young age. So they sort of left me alone. 
during childhood. I didn't really get snatched till 17. And that is a whole story in itself. Hey, and no, I didn't got physically snatched? They kidnapped No, no, mentally, psychologically, spiritually snatched. They don't touch you. It's the white glove treatment. Okay. You know, only, only when you get sort of thrown off the train do they bring in the bottom grade enforcers. You know that you know the more criminal elements in the cult, right? Mm-hmm. Only then do they bring them in. At the top level, darling, they are just. I mean, it's it's Machiavellian. It's it's just you've got to give them credit. They you know they don't leave a mark. You know it's no touch torture eugenics. It's invisible. It's invisible well, torture. <laughs> that's interesting that you bring that up because um, I've always, you know, we hear of this trauma-based mind control, and I've always wondered if that's happened to me. But I've got three psychics that tell me I have not been through these trauma-based programs. However, I they think that I am controlled, but it's more of a hypnotic type of uh, mind control. See, I don't trust psychics. I reckon trust your own gut, right? It, like, I don't know. I don't... Anyone from outside, whether it's priests or psychics, like, I don't fucking trust it. I don't trust any middleman. Like, you know what you're... I mean, this is why, in a way, I... I'm, a, it, I'm not an evangelist or anything. It's not Aussie style to go evangelism, and people believe in what they believe. And I'm fine with whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fine. I'm not an evangelist. But for me, you know, it's like... I, it, it's like I ha, like no one's been able to help me find this mystery not the shrinks not the psychics not the this not the priest not the no, nobody it's been this sort of in a way this I've had to look at myself like through my that's why I started videoing as well you know I want to see myself well, I couldn't work out why is everyone videoing me why is everyone wanting to take my photo and yet they're not giving me any jobs or opportunities what's going on here so I sort of picked up the camera around 2000 right and and before that I started the writing and I'm so grateful I did it because it's like bread crumbs, you know. Every story that I did at the time, and that's with my book, 21st Century Showgirl, I pulled all these stories together. I pulled, um, you know, the stories over these decades together because I was really on my own holy grail in a way to find out. Originally, I wanted to find out why was my mother sad? What was the sadness in my mother? Because it didn't come from my father. He's an amazing man, right? And if I believe in Jesus, my father was like living that. He was living that in a really humble, his Christianity was so wow, you know. So he was sort of my example. And so I was like, you know, what happened with mom? And I just needed to work it out. So I really think I went into a a life of art or what, you know, you know, it's, it's like at the beginning of this interview, you just, you told me how you, you know, st- when I asked you, you know, how did you start writing that book? Because I'm so interested in that subject like what actually propels us you know and it's much deeper than we're allowed to give ourselves credit for you know what i mean (laughs) yeah i've got to read your book now oh my Uh god yeah like when did you write it when did you write it i I wrote it a couple years ago but you see i uh i I travel uh, the world with a documentary film team uh investigating paranormal events and stuff like uh elongated skulls Ayahuasca wow. rituals, blood sacrifice rituals, and stuff like that. Then oh I, I have my YouTube show, which I, you know, where I, that's, I guess how you ran across me, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's so random. Like, I don't even really know who I'm talking to. But I, I, I do know it was just a couple of comments from yours, and one of them, yeah, was your book, right? Yeah. So that struck me, and I'm just like, wow, you know? And, yeah, like, you know, very very random right? right but really to me they're the best connections you know yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. you know the, the cosmos or you know the spirit uh, puts us in contact with, with people you know yeah yeah and totally so, yeah wow 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 so so when did you find out about your family like what you know was it something you knew really young or was it you know well when I was young growing up uh, this great uncle they was built at federal buildings and schools and stuff named after him and uh but my family or my dad would tell me he's like you can't understand you will never understand how powerful this person is is you know and the truth is it's just the opposite my dad didn't understand but you know we're told stories of like 
certain protocols, whereas in galas and ballrooms and stuff like that all over the world, you, United Nations events and stuff like that, there's a, there's a protocol, it's like a ritual. In other words, if people come into the big ballroom and they're announced, you know, the ambassador of this, the king or queen of that, and everything like that, then they're announced, and then they walk all the way to the back where my great uncle is sitting at a table, and they give their respects to him, and then they can talk to people. Then they, they go and join the party or whatever. It's like a, a ritual. Oh, my gosh. And so, you wow. know, all these things we hear about Operation Pay. There, you can go online right now and look at, look at a picture of my great uncle with Werner von Braun, the Nazi uh, rocket scientist, SS guy that my great uncle brought over here, along with all the other uh, scientists of Operation. Oh Pay my gosh! Yes. Oh MK my Ultra. Gosh. He started. It, it, it's you can be, you can go get a book at the library that talks about how my great uncle was in charge of the Manhattan Project. Bringing, oh bringing the world's first atomic weapon. I mean, this is not, you can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. That's right. And so I often <laughs> wondered, well, if there is all this secret spy stuff and mind control, all that stuff, and I just happen to be, you know, uh, related to him, I wonder if so I'm involved or they somehow did something to me, you know, because I have lived in poverty uh, almost all my life up until a few years ago. Uh, and struggling yeah, as an too. artist, yeah. and my yeah. my little brother, who's two and a half years younger than me, and very evil, uh, he's very yeah. rich. He makes three million dollars a year. You know, he makes yeah, that's right eight yeah. thousand dollars a day. Uh, and and uh, he's a bad person. Because um, he probably sold you out, lovey. I mean, they've always got to sell someone out. Bloody hell. No. Yeah, well, no, he, he just got on by his own evil genius, you know, he's just incredibly smart, but, uh, but I mean, but my mom... My, yeah, but you're incredibly my, smart, too, and well, you, you know what I mean, like, who cares told, about incredibly smart? Well, Go on. mom told dad, mom, my mom told my dad that I'm the smart one, so anyway. <laughs> exactly, my mom told me I'm the smart one, too, yeah. right? <laughs> Evil is not smart. Ultimately, it's, it's you know, if you're going to feed the death machine, you're a dummy. You're a bloody bimbo, you know. Wow. <laughs> so, you know? It's, it's, fasc it's fascinating. And then, you know, oh, so it's wow. totally fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I'm really, you know, interested in other people. I've always been interested in other people's stories, too, because I just think, you know, that's how we, like, find our, like, I don't know, just certain things resonate in other people's stories. You know what I mean? Like, and look... I, it was my, even though, like, my dad's a Kennedy, right? John Kennedy, um, his dad was Jack Kennedy, his dad was... Okay, um, now, that, this is what I wanted to get to. I didn't want to be rude and say anything earlier, but, of course, when, when we very first started talking, I'm thinking to myself, is this person uh, part of the Kennedys as in the Kennedy clan? Is that what you're telling me? No, but no, but it's a bloodline thing, right? Of course. So of I don't course. know. I don't know if you've read Fritz Springmeier and he, you know, his book on the Illuminati bloodlines. Like Kennedy is one of them. So even if you're, yeah. it doesn't matter. They, they don't course. care whether you're the poorest shit knew farmer. That. I already knew that. Yeah. No, and you're absolutely one hundred percent right. Yes. It, you yeah. Know, see, and it's just like uh, my family. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm on the bloodlines of the Pharaonic dominators. And, and that's yeah. basically kind of, I'm sure what you are too, you know, or yeah. some version yeah. of it. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? It's not just the Kennedy. I mean, my mum and dad's marriage was like Camelot, right? Cause I, and I only found this out recently. And ironically, I found it out from the sister who's now trying to kill me off because what she wants is a narrative. You know, this is not just a war for the money, for the what, it's a, you know, it's a war for the narrative. It's like the winners right history right well i want the losers to what right history for a change right mm -hmm. i haven't had children because of this programming i i've got no one to pass this on to i can just be auntie i can be auntie for the world you know what i mean we all got our role you know what i mean and 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 i do think this is also you know part of what they're doing is destroying motherhood and the different ways they're destroying motherhood and they're also destroying heterosexual relationships Relationships, you know, like, like they're sort of juice between men and women. They just hunt, they harness everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, they can yeah, harness yeah. our fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, divide and conquer. You know, the rich against the poor. The Total divide the white, and conquer. The men against the yeah. women. The conservative against the liberal. You know, everything's. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Or even, you know, that's why I can't even, you know, sort of join groups anymore because I just, I, you know, I love other people. I'm so social, but the way they're engineering everything now, they just. 
you know, if you're traumatized, they'll set you up against someone else who was traumatized in a different way. You've got your trigger, they got their trigger, everyone gets triggered, boom. You know, they herd the cats off into another direction. And that's how they're winning this bloody war. It just drives me nuts. But, right. And, right? You, you were and, one, uh, you're one of the only people that, persons that had a kind remark for me on my post. Everybody else was just uh, talking shit. I know. But I mean, but that, that's okay. I don't do too much, you know, posting and stuff like that. I've been, uh, it's nice. Man, you should do more. Show. You should do more because there's a lot of people out there like me that just would just like well, no, really tune right. in, boom to you, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's my YouTube channel that, that uh, I wouldn't have done what I did unless I had the YouTube. I even I very rarely don't yeah. post a video. That was just very unusual. It's, it's my YouTube channel where I draw my strength from because I've got tens of thousands of viewers worldwide. Fantastic, good on you. I've got fuck all. Like, yeah. good on you, man. So that but you know what? Back. I sort of think in a way, like, look, the, the war, the spiritual war, this is what I love about America. And actually, what I know about Texas, Texas is like, okay, you've got, and the, but America generally, okay, because I lived in New York. I lived, you know, I, I sort of, I, I, I toured like, you know, Boston, uh, what was it, Salem? Oh, they got me with the witches, man. Salem, Boston. New York. I spent most of my time in New York and sort of that area or or the sort of Massachusetts sort of um, area. But um, what I loved about America was that I felt like there it's like an even war. It's like you've got like there is a real spiritual war going on. And, you know, Texas is really interesting because you've got the sort of, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, you've got that Bible Belt tradition, you've got that believing tradition, you've also got a big science, um, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, research and stuff in mm -hmm. science and oh, yeah. all this stuff yeah. goes on in Texas. Um, um, I, I've had different friends from te who I've. We're, we're oh my god! Texas. <laughs> like Texas is a hot spot, man. It's, you know, it's, like it's, Forbes it's, doesn't it's, have to tell me. It's a spiritual cop's hot spot. Sorry to interrupt and go on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so, and they had Buddy Holly. You know, Buddy Holly was from Texas. So. Yeah. And oh uh, look, you know, I mean, I've never been to Texas, but uh, you know, Texas has crossed my path on so many levels. Oh my God! Well, let me tell um, you, and I've, I've got a show go called Bases Texas. You've heard of the Bases Project, right? Uh, yeah, I've watched a lot of that. That comes from England. That guy, yeah. Miles, someone. Yeah, Miles yeah? Johnson. Who's Is that who we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, he's a friend yeah. of mine, and he um, we became friends because he interviewed me on the show, The Bases Project. And I am on Basis 67. Uh, the whole oh, I have to watch that. I've watched Basis quite a few of those, but I, I don't think I've seen that, so I'm going to Google that. So yeah, go he, on. He helped me a lot, and I now have a show called Basis Texas. Fantastic! Yeah, Basis Texas. <laughs> And and that and that's that's been re remarked on enough that uh, now Miles is start he's fixing to start a new one called Bases 100. But I asked Miles' permission to start Bases Texas if I could you know use that name and he 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 agreed to that. Uh, that you know that's res that's respect and we need to respect each other and that's the sign of your character. Good on you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you know who James Caswell is. Yeah. Bloody oath, man. I mean, I don't know any of these people personally, but I've been following this shit for a decade, so yeah, right. I do. Well, I don't know, I don't know James Casbold. You know, and you know Max Spears, right? Yes. Do you know Sarah Adams? Who she is? Oh, yes. I've watched her too. Sarah, the Adams, message, Sarah Adams. <laughs> Sarah Adams messaged me about two hours ago to cuss me out. Why? Because I get a, uh, some videos a few uh, videos ago, and I and uh, I don't usually point the finger or call anyone out, but uh, I did to her because she's rip, been ripping some people off uh, on, on her psychic deals, charging them like 250 bucks, and then not giving, not even taking their calls or whatever. And she's just. A, this is why I can't stand psychics, lovey. They're parasites. Like fuck off. I just want the direct bloody God. He'll give it to me without the psychics. I know. I can't. Yeah, look, it, it, it's why I'm dodgy about psychics, I've got to tell you. But go on, go on. Well, a lot of people are. But anyway, no, so I, um, um, I, 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 some of the people in the uh, truth, like, I know, uh, do you know Chris, have you ever heard of Christine Joanna Hart? Oh, I love her. Yeah. I listen to many of hers as well. And she's very interesting because she's one of the few women who's ever admitted, right, mm -hmm. to being MK Ultra. In, entranced, yeah. right? Yeah. And I found her podcast so interesting. 
She's such an interesting woman. Yeah, she right? is. She's very honest. Very honest. Oh, she is. Yeah. She's great. I talk to her almost every day, and I've been on her show, and she was on uh, my show just recently, and so she's been a good uh, help for me, guiding me. She gives me advice and stuff all the time. Oh, she's terrific. I, I, I hope has she's still got her, you know, I'm a bit out of touch with what's happening with my mother, but she's still got her show and everything. She's well, still she's, doing her thing. She's had different shows, and, I, and, I, and I'm, she's, I, she's, when I talk, she's between shows right now, but then again, it, she just came up with a video like yesterday um, uh, with Mer Mary Rodwell, so I'm wondering if maybe she got her show back or something because... I don't know how I, I haven't watched this interview yet, but uh, or listened to it. She does right. She does audio only mostly. Well, I hope she does, you know, because I think she's got so much to offer this conversation. Oh, yeah. She's helped me, she like just good. listening to her, listening to her interviews. Um, and you know, the thing is, I don't also agree with everything she said. I don't have to agree with everyone. No. I can appreciate. I can. I can appreciate. And you know what I appreciate the most. When people just tell their truth about what happened with them, yeah. I love those people for life. If I don't agree with other shit, that you know, not shit, shit's the wrong word, with other things they say, mm -hmm. who cares? I grew up in a family we can disagree with each other, right? Uh, whatever, we can have other, and because we're all, if we're all searching for the truth, Truth is God. To me, truth is God, yeah. bottom line, yeah. right? Well, and if you're really searching for the truth and you're really putting your, you know, skinny white ass out there for it, right. <laughs> or skinny white right. black ass or skinny whatever uh -huh. color your ass is, if you're putting your ass out there, you know, I respect you, yeah. right? And we don't have to agree on everything That's else. That's right. We don't have to agree on everything. Yeah. 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 You know, um, I so I did an interview with her just just recently, about a month ago, and I'm telling you, I've been into this conspiracy stuff my whole life, and this interview is the scariest interview. I think I may have already maybe heard just the realism in it, and uh, because she was being uh, she was in a confrontation with Michael Aquino in the astral. Yeah. And this yeah. is uh, this is all put on my uh, this is all you can. Uh, listen to it. I really highly recommend yeah, it. Yeah, you got to send me the link. I want to see oh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah post it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because, you know, like, yeah, you know, I just feel like it's like, um, look, I think we need roots and we need antennas. And if we dig ourselves into our roots, you know, what they want us to do is move from our countries, move from our front lines so they can control us. And I've been through this, right? My my book, 21st Century Show, is all about this. But you know where the real war is? Stand firm in your roots and then put out antennas. And then tune into other people who are also in other roots, right? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and that's how we, you know, that's how we change the world, not from the fucking penthouse, from the bloody, you know, garden, from the roots, right? Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, but you can still appreciate other antennas, like, oh, wow, thanks for, like, coming up through your roots and, you know, you put your antennas out and I heard you and, oh, I'll tell you about my roots now, like, with losing my parents, the way they've taken my parents from me, it's so full on, but I'm like... It's all about roots. Like, you know, if I have a message to anyone in your audience and they probably know it anyway, like just stay, stay put, stay put, stay. We're all in a Gaza Strip, right? Mm -hmm. I'm in a Gaza Strip in Sydney. You're in one in Texas. Joanna's in one in, you know, because, you know Very what? good what? point. That I love I'm, the way that you're saying that. Yeah, they turned the whole damn world into a Gaza Strip. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they want to erase each other's memories. So we've got to be each other's memories. Right? No, it's all about that. It's all about re rewriting history and, you know, then there's yeah. the chronology deniers. Have you heard of this latest thing that's going on, the Tartarian Empire and mud floods and stuff? Oh, God, you know, I, I'm not catching up with everything, but fill me in. What's well, it? Well, I, I will very little because you have to check. It, it, this is the biggest, I mean, it's turning the whole conspiracy world up on their on their head. And it's so true once you see what it is. There was this ancient civilization that even just only 150 to 200 years ago got erased from the history books. And let me tell mm -hmm. you, uh, all these all these damn buildings, Victorian buildings and all that shit, 
it, the people who they said built them didn't build those things. They are much older than that. All these old cathedrals, they're not churches. They're power stations for the collection and transmission of wireless energy. Is that why that one in France got burned down? Probably, and that's what the Eiffel Tower is. I mean, just look at the Eiffel Tower. They said, oh, it's a big sculpture. That doesn't even make sense. What does the Eiffel Tower look like? It looks like an antenna. That's what it is. I know, or a big dick, like a robot dick. Awful. Yes, and so it gets so deep. Check out this. I, 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 all, we don't know that all aspects of this, uh, what they call Star Force, Mud Flood, and, and uh, Tartarian Empire are real, even though the, the Tartarian Empire is totally documented all over the world. It, it had ambassadors to all these different countries and stuff like that, and they've tried to go erase it out of the books, but they weren't able oh to erase God. it everywhere, and it's, it's so there, it, it, it's totally documented. But it, some of the weirder aspects of this is, if it's true, I'm not saying this is true, that when the, the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock, the yeah. Empire State Building and the Manhattan Bridge were already here. Oh my God. Yes. The, that, that is a device. The Empire State Building working together with the Manhattan Bridge, it's all one device. Oh my God. Look, you know what? what? Like, when I get some money, I want to send you my book, 21st Century Showgirl, right? Because yeah. it's a sort of magical realist memoir, memoir, which, you know, in retrospect is, you know, whatever. An MK Ultra realist memoir, whatever, you know. But what happened was, I met, I call him Mr. Manhattan, right? I meet him post 911, right? After I've done the show, like, called Last Night in New York, where I collect everyone's stories off the streets in New York, right? Six weeks after September 11th, right? And then I got targeted really badly, right? And everything wow. started to go to shit. Wow. Fucking go to shit. But I've got so many videos from that period, right? Wow. I somehow want to get them out there. Maybe I'll send them to you. I just feel like... I don't know when they're going to kill me. I've got to save this evidence, right? Anyway, but the thing is, I meet him after, right? He produces my show last night in New York, right? He's like a Manhattan uh, Jew, and I don't think it's just a Jewish, uh, like, it's higher than that, right? So, And it was so funny when I came back to Australia and I was pissed off with him and I was like, oh, those bloody Jews. And mum says to me, don't you go after the Jews. you got Jew in you, you know. So mum never let me be racist or discriminatory against any group she's like look deeper right mm -hmm. so she, uh, if i'm thinking now it's my mother's it's my parents legacy right because mm -hmm. they force me think deeper think deeper don't get caught here right, right. but okay and of course in new york they're going to be jews oh, <laughs> i mean yeah, right. you know what i mean like yeah. you know but most of my perps in australia were wasps and whoever you know what i mean it's everyone okay. you know like what you're going to shoot the whole world so, anyway, but, I, okay, so I meet him um, and I'm in this sort of sublet, you know, everything's set up. I'm in this little goat house in uh, West 77th Street, you know, in the basement. And, you know, he comes along and he's on the west side as well. And the west side of New York at that time was like, you know, it was like Jewish families and like lesbians and, you know, leftists. It's, you know, but a lot of Jewish, like it's got roots, but it's got sort of down home, uptown west side roots, right? Mm -hmm. And he's subletting a place. Well, within six months of handling me, he's got a fucking uh, penthouse uh, on the east side, you know, on mm -hmm. east what was it, 37th Street, you know, and it's looking straight out onto the Empire State Building, which was a backdrop to my show, Cultural Refugee, that I took to New York. And it's almost exactly the same angle. And all through my book, the Empire State Building features. And when he lures me back to marry him, when he lures me back, guess, you know, uh, like, and this is a chapter in my book, the colour of the Empire State Building is purple. And I'm like pondering that. What is that? Purple's the colour of royalty, purple, whatever. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work out the mystery. Well, and then I say to him, what is that? You know, because I'm, and he says to me, it's Alzheimer's Awareness Week. What has my mother got that incarcerated her in this nursing home? Alzheimer's. Yeah. Why did I came, yeah. come back to Sydney? Because my mother said, don't let those yanks take you for another ride. Come home, love. 
But when I came home, my sister Trish, Grand Dame Trish, and her academic husband, right, uh-huh. Joseph Yezzy, yeah. have all fucking lined her up, got his mother to humiliate me at the Christmas table, like, you bring bad men into the family. Why do you bring so many bad men into the family? You bad, you bad girl, right? Oh all this shit. Right? Wow. And, and my sister has my mother dressed up in fucking red and black. Mm-hmm. See, my mama, once she worked out who my sister was, she would only dress in blue. Because she just knew this satanic shit. Whenever they set up a ritual for me, what do they dress up in? Red and black, right? Like, you know, there's too many patterns. Like, okay, I just believe in patterns, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? I'm just looking at patterns. Did you actually marry this man? No, darling, I escaped him. But you know what? He was supposed to have pushed me off that balcony like that. I escaped him. And it's all in my book, 21st Century Showgirl. And so I've been trying to get that book out of this country. So, you know, like, I just want, I just, that book is. Is it fiction or nonfiction? That's what I'm trying to find out. The 21st Century Showgirl, is fiction or nonfiction? Darling. It's magical realist memoir. Okay, got and, it. And do you know what else? There's no such thing as fiction. I know There's that. There's no I know such that. thing as fiction. Yeah. Fiction is just the unconscious that's too scared to expose itself, all right? Of course. So I never called it fiction. It wasn't fiction. It was happening in real life. But I was in a lucid dreaming. I was in a trance state. Yeah. So I'm probably the fucking only mind-controlled slave in the world who's written her own book. Okay, Fritz Springmeier had to, you know, write the book for the whatever. You know, like everyone gets someone else to write their book. Yes. I wrote my book, man. I Absolutely. wrote my book. I wrote my book because I got my my Kennedy father in me. Uh, when, when, and I got how long, my how, how old? When did, how how long ago was the book finished? Okay, I I came back from New York in 2006. I knew, oh, there's something wrong with me. I've lost my judgment. I also knew my sexuality had been weaponized. I knew something was going on. Yeah, and I, I, thought, I, I thought your what had been weaponized. My sexuality. That's what I thought you said. Okay, this is this is fascinating. Okay, I'm with you. Let's go. Let's hear my it. sexuality had been weaponized. I can show you my body of work in performance from the night this is why they're erasing my work they're erasing me i'm being erased as we speak right and that's why i gave you my lobster gate site just fucking download everything it's i've just been fucking putting shit up as quick as i can and they did and they and then they got my parents and so i've had to put up stuff for them so i've, I've sort of got three crosses on my back right now right because right. i'm trying to save i'm trying to write their story or save their story, not write it, I don't write anyone's story, save their story, save my dad's story, save my story, okay? And so my um, my parents' grandchildren can be saved because you know what, they had five children, they've only got two grandchildren, one has already been targeted by these pedophiles, been medically fucking trafficked, been no, I, I, my I, nephew, I, I, I love him, man, I wanna save him, I wanna save my niece, all right? Okay. And to me, as a middle-aged generation, that is our job. We save the elders, we save the youth. That's yeah. our job, all right? You That's bet. it, to be the link between the elders and the youth, right? Uh-huh. When I've done that job, God will take me. I really believe this. All the copyright to my stuff is with Jesus Christ. So anyone, everyone is free to my work or whatever, okay. but I, I've got some he's, just, he's just owned to copyright. That's it. I got no manager. I got no whatever. I don't I, own I, I my own. You, I want to ask you about some specific, I want to ask you about the sexuality business, okay? Because I, I told you that I have a handler. She's one of the most beautiful women in the world. She was also- Of course she is, honey. Yeah, and she was like, she, anyway, she's really in the Hollywood stuff, okay, but do, 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 at that time when you had that, did you have like a almost like a superhuman sexual ability? And you were, did, they, they, you they were trained me with geishas. Yeah. They it? trained me with geishas in Tokyo. I was trained. I was taken through the performance scene. I was led to Tokyo. Right. Yes. I, I end up with this a Japanese landlady, um, Mrs. Ogimachi, whose descendant apparently from President um, Hirohito, and she runs a tea ceremony school, and um, so she teaches all the geishas um, tea ceremony. 
she gave me a flat in Ikebukuro at the time in the 90s for 100 bucks a week, which was just unbelievable because all the other bloody foreigners are, you know, having a living gaijin houses in Weno or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, but Ikebukuro is also, interestingly, the... Um, Ma- the Japanese mafia. I can't remember their name. They've got their own name. Right? The, the triads the or the Yakuza? The Yakuza? The Yakuza. Yakuza. Yeah. Uh, Ikebukuro was the Yakuza base. Okay. So I don't. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know nothing. You know, I I went there. I was studying Kyogen theatre. Kyogen is traditional um, traditional Japanese comedy. It comes in the middle of no plays. N O H. Mm-hmm. Right. And 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 um. Uh, no is sort of like a cross between Tai Chi and opera <laughs> and it's the most obscure art most Japanese don't understand it it's 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 sort of old mm-hmm. you, you know very old uh, but you know I where, where did I meet my Navy brat husband in the green room of this Jap of this no theater where I was performing uh, a Kyogen version of Molière's Tartuf, where I played the wife. And I'm all done up in the obi and all that. And and and, and this is the thing, like, you know, um, my, uh, well, she was like the Jap- my Japanese grandma, my Japanese granddame, Miss Zogimachi, you know, who gave me, but she would teach me how to put on the obis and, you know all of this and um and then and the tea ceremony and then um you know the wo- the woman who was linked to her who was portuguese uh, who I, I was first stayed with right before miss soggy much you know put me up in her flat um you know um she, I've got, took, I've got. she took me to us as, 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 asakusa and that's where all the geishas are and so i would be hanging out with these geishas and I didn't know how I ended up there because you know I had a big Scottish potato head like yeah. and they were so yeah. beautiful like they were so beautiful and it was like how did I end up here and in a way it just made me feel more unacceptable or more you know my paws were too big my neck was too thick I looked like a tree trunk in an obi like what that you know I only went to fourth form what am I doing here okay I've got but, a question I've got a question for you uh, yeah. Do you have suppressed memories? Were, were, were there things that, 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 that happened that you didn't remember at the time, but then maybe later you remembered them? Yes. Okay, okay. So, but, okay. But mainly, they were around traumas, right? Oh, oh but I thought you said Around that they such but, horror, you can't remember. You can't but I, thought even, you, I thought you said that they didn't, I thought you said that they didn't do the trauma on you. No, they did, but it's very subtle. We're talking about, um, and it's many layers. So the trauma aspect of it, you you block out because you've been traumatized, because you've been made to see something that's too horrifying, all right? Right. Um, The rest of it, you remember, and the rest of it is beautiful, such as the geishas swimming around, like, Japanese swans or or uh, you know the you know uh, surfing around the penthouse in New York and not quite being in your body it's only later you remember things like the videos that he had lined up when you returned (laughs) Uh, right those sorts of things those sorts of things that are so abominable you don't want to speak them in public you don't want to remember them Mm -hmm. you know you didn't think that's where you were going to end up you didn't think whatever and as much as i could i told that truth in my book 21st century showgirl right but i told it before certain memories had been you know certain because you've got to unpack trauma it's about unpacking trauma right and they keep you traumatized so you can barely unpack the last trauma before they put in the first the next one like the trauma is so constant (laughs) i've got another question for you at this time were you uh, irresistible in other words men found you irresistible you could you could have you could uh was I thing? was irresistible, man, and I couldn't work it out. How did I get irresistible? 
Okay, Lydia, I mean, listen, I mean, I, I'm so convinced. I mean, this, this girl I've got that, that's my handler, it's, it's, I mean, you know, she walks into a room, and I mean, it's just a whole, it's, there's nobody, it's like there's nobody, like, it's like a power. It's unbelievable. It's, a power. it's unbelievable. You know, men wrote poems, men wrote poems in my honor. They, they did portraits, they did whatever. They did, because something would come, um, look, it's a sex kitten programming. It turns, in, like they use the cat um, for, uh, you know, uh, like the cat is the symbol of it. And, you know, let's look at cats. Like, you know, like cats aren't dogs. You know, dogs will do anything for love. But, you know, cats, you've got to like, you've got to like, show them your love you know like for example if if you want to you know a geisha to be your mistress you've got to like unpack like fucking you know a uh, hundred yards of material <laughs> you know you've got to you've got to you've got to unpack you've got to unwrap that obi and everything else right i mean it takes a man to dress a geisha right and that's a strong man right so if you're the man who wants to buy the geisha you have to unpack a lot of fabric and you have to, she's not a whore, right? But she is a high presidential model sex slave. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, just like my, like, for instance, my friend recently, just a few weeks ago, got paid $5,000 to help somebody name their baby. You know, yeah. shit like that. Yeah. She, she's uh, good. For, she used to date Lance Armstrong, the, the bicycle guy. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, uh, and are, are you? Are, we don't. We have not exchanged. And I can blot out the email part. But what's your email? Uh, I'll tell you offline. Yeah, yeah we're not. I'm, I'm not stopping the interview. I just want you to tell me your the email, or if you have one. Are you still with me? Hello. Oh, 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 sorry, the cord came out of the phone, hold on. Okay, can, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, the cord came out of the phone. Okay, my bad, my bad, okay. Um, yeah, do you have your, do, do you want to give me your email, and do you, like, or what is it? No, I do, but I don't want to do it while we're recording, so because I don't want everybody else to have my email, right? Uh, uh, right, 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 right. But, I mean, that, I edit these things. It's, 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 Not at the moment, because I mean, I, okay, I am no, in danger. Fine, fine. <laughs> Let me get get a piece of get a pencil and a piece of paper, and I'm gonna give you mine. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Pencil. Piece of paper. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. A M okay. okay, I'm gonna do Alpha Yankee India Nashville. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that's A M, okay? And then the second word, but there's no space, is Thropos. T H R O P O S. A N Thropos T Gmail. T H R O P O-S. That is correct. Uh, let me spell that back to you. Okay. A-Y-I-N-T-H-R-O-P-O-S. At gmail.com. Okay, great. Got it. <laughs> right, so I'm not, you know, uh, and, and, uh, if it's no trouble, just send me a... Uh, no, of course I will. Okay. Of course I will. It's just at the moment, you know, with everything that's happening, it's like, oh, my God. They're, like, attacking me from all sides because... Okay. I, I'm at the end of a long war, all right? And my main focus is to save my parents. And my parents' legacy, both of them, is actually more important than mine. And if I've suffered or gone through all of this, you know, because even when I was in Tokyo, like everywhere, my parents never let go of me, right? I've got letters that I wrote to them back and forth. So I've got all this evidence, like a lot of stuff's been stolen. But because um, my parents kept a stable house where until they got kicked out and my brother uh, uh, destroyed everything, um, well, not everything, but, you know, they saved a lot and I tried to rescue as much as I could, you know, because what I am looking at is the memory of my parents. And I haven't even really told you about my mother yet, 
But what I've realised is, yeah, my dad's a Kennedy, and so that's enough reason to get you, you know, CIA targeted. But my mother, my mother and hers is a bloodline that's been hidden. My mother is descendant. She's a bastard blue blood from the 10th Earl of Pembroke, this fucking prick who used to, um, psychopath extraordinaire, who was married to Elizabeth Spencer. So, you know, we've got Diana, you know, you understand that her maternal bloodline's been cuckolded and, you know, sucked in by these bastards, you know, <laughs> millennia. But, uh, so Elizabeth Spencer was married to him. What was his name? Henry Hooper or something. Um, 10th Earl of Pembroke, and he had mistresses. One was called Kitty Hunter. I mean, do you believe the names? It's just unreal. Kitty Hunter. And the other one was um, uh, mm-hmm. Carolyn. Uh, God, why does that? Well, I've, I, I've got blocks in my memory too, right, that they've almost sort of put in, like, don't remember that, right? Um, Carolyn Metcalf. <laughs> And what happened was she was marrying some guy in Venice and um, he seduced her away from her wedding day into his bed, got her pregnant with Carolyn Metcalf. Uh, actually, the woman who we got pregnant, her name's lost, of course. Got her, um, and you can look this up on Wikipedia, it's all there. Got her pregnant with Carolyn Metcalf and that's what my mother is descended from. So we're descended from bastard blue blood of this psychopathic uh, 10th Earl of Pembroke who used to break horses for the British military. And my theory is, you know, like, they did with horses what they did with people because horses are very intelligent, very sensitive, right? And if you want them to run and win for you, you'd better work out how to traumatise them in the right way, right? right. So this prick, right, this fucking prick, this old royal psychopath, practices on horses and then tries it out on women and um and then you know so then descended from carolyn metcalf is octavia hamilton and i've got to send you the uh you know the dissertation my sister did on octavia hamilton who's my great great grandmother who was the most scandalous woman in australian opera and i didn't know this when i wrote my book 21st century showgirl wow. because I became the skin right I didn't know and that's why they're trying to wipe out my book everything because the thing is you wouldn't know this being in Texas but anyone from Australia your voice from, went down like, again. you know my right, right. Right. say that again uh, your voice went away for a moment but now it's back okay I'll say it again um, you wouldn't know this being from Texas, but if you've got any listeners from Australia, <laughs> there was a show in the 80s called Simon Townsend's Wonder World. And I was cast as a reporter on this show. It was a really big Aussie show. If you Google it, have a look. Actually, a lot of the stuff, all the videos were, um, I mean, it was a big television show. Um, it ran for seven years. It won five Logies. You know, the Logies. Uh-huh like the Australian Television Award oh, right. um, it, um, and and they had national auditions all over Australia to choose, you know, the reporters, right? So it was a huge cattle call, right? right. And the press was involved and right. was involved. And, you know, so I was up against, say, 2,000 other women, right, uh-huh. for getting this job. Uh-huh. And I, I got it and I know now it was... Um, you know, the producer, Harvey Shaw, he was ex-Australian um, military intelligence, ex-Duntroon. Duntroon are the elites of the military, right? If you talk to a military guy, you know, who came up through the ranks, right, uh-huh. he'd like, oh, those Duntroon uh-huh. faggots, those Duntroon faggots, they just come in and start telling us what to do. Because uh-huh. a normal soldier has to come up from the ground, right? Uh-huh. But the Duntroon uh-huh. faggots... They just go through Duntroon and boom, then they get to order around the real men who have to come up through the ranks. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So um, anyway, so Harvey Shaw, Harvey Shaw, ex-military intelligence. And I remember when I, when I first filmed, we first videoed my first stories for Wonderworld, 
you know, because they weren't sure about me at first. You know, I was a bit odd. <laughs> um, but on another level, I wasn't. I was very much of my time. I was very much a 80s girl, right? Is your mother but um, I was odd in terms of... Does your mother have the same name that you do? <laughs> Um, my mother's name, her maiden name was Gwendolyn Lloyd, and then, I, did I hear that question right? Uh -huh. uh, yes. Did you say that again. Is you, do, does your mother, I'm looking at Gwen Kennedy on the internet, and is it your? Is this your mother, or what? Yeah, that's my mother. Okay. Okay, and she was Gwendolyn Lloyd, who became Gwen Kennedy, right? Uh, yeah. And, um... So she's the one, like the erased bloodline, right? Uh -huh. She's the one descendant from the 10th Earl of Pembroke and from the scandalous Octavia Hamilton. That's my mother, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, her picture's all over the place. That's my I mother. I don't see your picture. No, because I'm focusing on mummy. Yeah, because yeah, it's not about me yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. You know, I've sort of kept, like, Wednesday, like, you know, Look, they erased a lot of Wednesday, right? Uh, They've, uh, I've, I've been uh, there's, erased there's all over word. the place. But right now, I'm fighting for my parents, so I put her name out there. It's about there, there, There's a yeah. word that you're saying that I'm not understanding. I thought you said, like, free Wednesday, or it sounds like Wednesday. What is that word? Wednesday. Wednesday's child is full of wild. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, Monday, Tuesday, that's what Wednesday. I thought you were saying. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And I'm not that familiar with the point, but yeah. no, I, I instantly recognize that. Uh, we met so randomly, and we don't even know each other, and, I, and I, I'm so sort of uh, like a gorilla <laughs> at the moment. You know, I'm just fighting for mum, and I sort of, because I don't want my um, history or my whatever to pollute the bigger fight, which is about saving my mother from this nursing home where she's been, you know, she's been clinically tested and abused as we speak and I've been separated from her. That's my daily agony, right? So it's not about Wednesday Kennedy right now, it's about Gwen Kennedy, my mother. Yeah, you know I mean, I mean it, it's just out of human, uh, whatever, I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm curious about who I'm speaking to, that's why I was sitting here trying to look up your picture, but it's not. I know because because we only just met. And it's really random, and it was just from a couple oh, no, no, that's fine. of I'll Facebook just, I know, I, posts. I, I, so I, really I understand. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally get it. Yeah. yeah. I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> I know you do. I, you know, this is a very enjoyable conversation for me. I'm so lonely. Well, let me man. tell you, I've I'm been so doing lonely. this for uh, a few years, and this is already shaping up to be one of my best interviews. So, I mean, I'm, it's fascinating. Yeah, you're a uh, fascinating story. I mean, there's, let me tell you, there's not a shadow of a doubt in my mind that everything you're saying is true. They're not, I'm not, uh, you know, I've had kooks and stuff and people that were whatever delusional, but I, I know that you're, what you're saying is true. As God is my witness, thank you, you smart guy, thank yeah. you, you know. And the thing is, 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 the reason why I've sort of um, had to produce so much evidence, which they keep deleting, is because they keep saying I'm crazy, I'm this, I'm that, and so, hey, I've got the evidence. But then they delete the evidence, you know. Uh -huh. So I'm sort of in this terrible position, right? It's a war. It's a war, but we're, we're all in it. I don't think like it's only happening to me, you know. But how you get, um, look, everyone is kept so isolated and so discredited and so entrapped in their own way. Mm -hmm. I, look, I'm someone who in the past, you know, I have to work out, okay, I, I want to do a show. So how do I get pe people into that show, right? So I have to, like, do the graffiti, do the posters, do the... Um, press releases, um, work out how I'd get my plane ticket there, negotiate with the venue managers, no. you know, like, like I have to work out a lot of shit. Yeah, I cannot yeah, I, negotiate I, this era. I cannot I, negotiate it. They've got, they've worked out how to separate us. I don't know how to do it, right? Uh -huh. And, you know, if I can't do it and I've got this, like, I'm like an old show girl, I've got this skill set, if I can't do it, no one can do it. 
like fuck. Well, maybe you can. You're pretty good. Well, but you, 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 <laughs> you got these followers. You got it happening. But fuck, I can't do it anymore. Well, I don't know. Well, I'm I mean, like an anachronism. Right? I'm an anachronism. Right? Sounds like you did do it. I mean, you've got a book and you and uh, you got a bunch of YouTube videos. But I, I haven't looked at the whole. Yeah, video. but they keep erasing me. They keep erasing me. Fuck. You know, they erase us. Like, how do we do it and keep? you know keep the conversation going i i don't know like i think that's where we i don't know i don't know they, they, i mean you're doing it so that's when people are doing it i get inspired because it's like oh maybe they know something i don't know i'm like an old dog but i can learn new tricks yeah oh. well remember what i told you earlier there and, and not that they've been kind to me i've i've done two stints in prison i've had a, a life of extreme violence and that maybe that was part of some of the trauma but yeah, I mean, uh, they're in yes. my in, in my yes. reality. They're grooming me to be some type of world leader. So yeah, they've got to help me do shit. But at the same yes. time, they know that I'm going to betray them at some point. You know, it's just weird. <laughs> yes. So they have to control you. You've got that prison sentence behind you. You know, like. They either give you a prison sentence or a disability pension. I don't think there's much difference. Oh, uh, disability <laughs> you know, pension something is much that worse. will discredit you. Pension, uh, disability pension is much worse, or anything having to do with psychiatrists is much worse, or or like with the situation your mother's in, which yeah, yeah. is tragic, where they can force medicine onto them. Yeah. Yep. The pharmaceutical bullies, yep. the pharmaceutical assassins. Yep. Yep. That's that's, that's, who the, that's who the police are. People think the police are those guys in the blue uniforms with the guns. That's nothing. The real police are the guys in white lab coats who uh, will stick a needle in your arm and they don't even need a, 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 a an arrest warrant or anything because they're okay. psychotic. They can say you're crazy. Amen, brother. Amen. That's that. who you got to watch out That is the with. truth. That is the truth. And the American Psychiatric oh. Association, the APA... Uh, advocates electroconvulsive therapy for children. ECT. Yep. That's putting yep. electricity onto a child's head. That's satanic. Oh my god. That is satanic. That's satanic. Oh, it's satanic. Oh. It's satanic. You know, how do you fight them without becoming like them? They make me so angry. This is why the only way I cannot become an assassin myself is Jesus. Do you understand that? It's the only way because, honestly, they just, there's no justice. There's no justice in the system. They take everything from you, and then they take your parents, and it's like, okay, I just got to, like, put my hands up to this, and it's like, okay, my only obligation or power is to tell the truth. The rest of it, I have no power over. Yeah. That has been more than proven yeah. how powerless I am. Now, in how your case, they had some help. It sounds me. like they had some help from your brother and sister. Uh, look, you know, my because of my parents' bloodlines, they've been targeting my family since birth. Of my course. mother had twins. Twins to begin with. I mean, who did Dr. Mangala's love uh, experimenting on? Twins, yep. right? The most beautiful girls you've ever seen in your life, like just adorable, right? And then there was me, little Irish potato head. And then my beautiful little sister came out and she became a newsreader for the ABC and they got her and I know how they got her. And this is the thing why it's been so hard to dob on my sisters. Especially my sisters, because my brother's adopted, but my sisters are blood, right? Uh -huh. So I know, you know, it's a, it, you know, I sort of, I've seen the way they've been cooked. I've seen the way we've all got a little bit of that occultic gift, uh, disassociation, high visual, um, you know, being able to sort of visualize things, so they can just plant things in our head and we'll visualize the rest. Um, highly intelligent, highly sensitive, very princess in the pea types, right? Yes. Because of the bloodline, right? Yes. And so they had absolutely been able to no touch torture us. And then they, they right. use my brother as the handler. Okay, it's not his fault, but I'm not going to give any uh, free rides to the Neanderthals. You're not as smart as a bloodline you were fucking adopted into. So get to the back of the room, you fucking Nazi, Stasi brown shirt prick. 
yeah. and say sorry to your mother before she yeah. dies. Say yeah. sorry to your mother before she dies, prick. There you go. That message sorry. is going out to the world right there. Your personal message to that man. Yeah. 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 That's a message. Yeah. You're great. You're like an angel. See, the thing is, uh, to me, I don't even care if you link with the ITO. You're an angel to me. Anyone who helps my mothers and what's happened now get out there, like, love you. And, you know, I can't talk anymore because I'm too tired, so we should okay. finish up now. But okay. I yeah, just, we, this yeah. has been the most fantastic yeah, we, we, conversation. We, yeah, we got 55 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's jaw-dropping, the, the testimony that you get. And I, I really want to... Uh, speak with you again sometime soon and so you uh, you've got my email and we'll yeah, course, we're, you know. yeah please please reach out to me and, and let's stay in contact yeah thank you so much yeah Gwen. And, and and give my, give, give my regards to you know joanne hart and you know the guy who ran basis and all the people you know i'm not part of that whatever but i've been watching mm -hmm. i've been grateful for their work you've all done and how you sort of tag team each other and you know it's given me strength well that um and you've given me strength thank, thank you for uh, uh, your kind words that you said on, on the, just a facebook posting you know that that, that was very nice and it, it brought, it drew well, you know what? It was more than kind. It was more than kind. It was like, you're a brave man, and I've got resonance there. And just, just bloody hell, keep posting. Uh, oh, yeah, I will. <laughs> it's I'm, I'm yeah, because there's more people like me that will, you know, we're just reaching to each other over the wilderness. And, and it is a wilderness. And it's like, you know, I, for me, I, I believe most Christians are sort of like, you know, and Christ wasn't even a Christian. He was just like a lone soldier out there, like, you know, working out truth and trying to wait for God. We're just trying to, like, connect with each other over the wilderness and, you know, like, like stop each other from committing suicide or killing each other or doing really things that it's not going to help like what helps is the information and is the communication and the conversation and i mean so i feel really grateful to you that and i feel grateful to god that i sort of, you know randomly found you and we've had this interview and and you know those ding dings that are going off it's so funny because somehow i've in, when i tried to download my videos when they were deleting them um and I, I downloaded some infection and and now i've got all these women saying i've got all these women in front of me going i love a big dick and will you meet me tonight <laughs> and all of this so i just think this sort of like Porn culture, this oh, like yeah. whatever. You, you're not even part of it. And you accidentally download it, and then you can't get rid of it, and then you've got to real, then you've got to like deal with it in an interview. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I mentioned yeah. it. It's like it's everywhere, man. We're just like infected. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a hyper sexualization of the of the world. You know, that's maybe we should do an interview about that one day, the hypersexualization of the world. I yeah, because be a great if you go into Walmart discussion. and what the and here and over here, what the young ladies and girls wear, like for a, a shorts, it's like a strip of cloth. Oh my god, they're like dressed to be baby prostitutes. Like, what the fuck's going on, man? I, know, I, I was like, I, like I, fucking hell. I, and let's make it a little bit hard for the boys. Get a lobby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, some of the people that I go to their homes and stuff and, and, uh, or whatever, yeah, I see these. It's, I'm like, what is this little piece of, this little hand towel? I was like, oh, my gosh, that's a pair of shorts for a young lady. I was like, what? You know, and, of course, you see them wear it. I mean, yeah. You know, and, and men are going to look. Believe me, I'm a man. I, I'm a man. I look. Oh, yeah, of man. course. And what, you're going to blame them and jail them for that? Like, fuck off. Yeah, like a, honestly, we're all they're in, ruining heterosexuality, man. They're ruining heterosexuality. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking fucking us up. Well, because we love each other, like men and women love each other, uh, and they're like making it out like we they're, fucking they're, they're done. They're never going to be they're able to do that. They they can put every every actor on television, every man actor on television can wear a dress, but guess what? They're not not all men are going to turn gay. But it's just not going to work. There's just, there's just, oh, you know, but I'll tell you what, it's working on a lot of people. 
I know, because the, the more loss they make us, and you know what I'd like to talk about in another interview with you too, because this started with me when I was 17, the tranny, why they've brought the tranny in, mm -hmm. um, how they traumatise the tranny to the max. I know so much about trannies. I'm an old yeah. show girl. But most of them are right. prostitutes. How, I mean, but, we, but this is an agenda, man. Oh, it's yeah, a fucking sure. agenda. Go on. It's a andro androgynous. Yeah, all androgynous. What a lot of bullshit, you know? And they're taking the balls off the men and they're taking the vaginas off the women. I'm over it. And you know why? That's another reason why they kept me quiet because because I was sort of like working in the arts or whatever and I was sussing things out and, you know, I, when I was married to that French um, Navy brat, well, they're either not really poofed at. They're like eunuchs. They just... They destroy them so much sexually. They don't know what the fuck they are. And so they get attracted to people like me because they think, oh, he might make me heterosexual again. Mm. Well, you know, only God can do that, darling. Mm. I'm just a woman. I'm not God. But any, <laughs> but I was noticed, like, I had this performance space in my backyard mm -hmm. after I married him called mm -hmm. Impromptu, Impromptu in the Yard, it was. And, and it was... Um, you know, different performance artists, comics. Um, actually, I did have a stripper. Um, she had a marvellous skill. She could pop ping pong balls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My vagina, but, you know. <laughs> but it was a bit much because the, the stage was a bit close to the audience oh, yeah. <laughs> in the face. But anyway, I was just, at that time, <laughs> I was just into, I was just exploring women, heterosexuality, whatever. And I had this um, performance space in my backyard. And guess who it got uh, closed down by? A fucking gay mime. Never trust a gay mime. A gay mime came in during it. And during the, you know, I, uh, you know, I had different people getting up and doing their pieces, whatever, you know, comics and monologists and musicians and stuff. So. And the gay mime gets up in the middle of it, goes in the middle of the comic and goes, heterosexual sexism, heterosexual sexism. And he fucking gets up on the stage, close it like that. We had to fucking get rid of him because he wouldn't get off the stage. And what does he do on Monday? He dobs us into the Leichhardt Council and we get closed down. And during that show, it's so interesting, on the balcony, right, uh, next to us, was standing a gay architect, Neil Armfield, who ran the Belvoir Street Theatre at that time, and this, um, uh, oh, is he, oh, I can't remember his name, but this Japanese guy. Um, who, you know, was living with him as a flatmate. They're all part of the same thing. And Neil Armfield, who runs the uh, Belvoir Street Theatre at the time, you know, says to me, oh, well, I don't, you know, he, he disagrees. I shouldn't be able to have a show about heterosexualism in my own backyard. I've got photos of this, right? And so I'm having this bloody argument with, like, Neil Armfield from my backyard and his balcony, you know, right? with the gay poofter next door. So, look, that's how long they've been fighting me. I knew, I knew in the 90s, they're trying to kill off the man-woman community. And I knew it, and I created a show, right? And, and I created a show, and who cares if you get a ping-pong ball in your bloody eye? Right. <laughs> Might wake you up, you bastard. Yeah. Might be the eye that wakes you up, you fucking bastard no, yeah. right and 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 it got closed down by gay mime and so i've been in this war for a long time on the grassroots and we'll talk about that more later but wow what a great conversation like i think you're fucking fantastic and um like you know, God bless you, man. Even if you don't believe in God, God bless you. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. And I mean, I'm gonna, You're great. I'm going to put this interview out there, you know. And, uh, and, and, you know and, okay, cool. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Heat. Let's talk again. Yes, let's do it. Okay, thank you so much. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye. That was excellent. Bye-bye.